All right, we are live and we are allowing our customers to be able to come in from the waiting room. They're starting to log in now. So as everyone is joining the event, coming in from the lobby, we are going to be waiting just a few seconds, maybe about 15, 20, to let everyone be able to come into the room for the beginning of the event. And then we will be getting started. Tyler, are you excited about today's topic? Very excited about today's topic. This is the one of the first webinars, if not the first. It's been a lot of webinars <laughs> over these <laughs> past couple months, but I believe this is the first uh, joint Robotique and, and Robotique partner uh, palletizing webinar. So we're happy to uh, be getting this information out there for um, some of our early adapters for this new uh, Robotique palletizing solution technology. Happy to discuss uh, what's been released, what's upcoming, and uh, how we can start production faster today. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm just watching the numbers come in. We've had a fair number of people come in from the lobby already. Uh, I haven't seen the number tick up in the last few seconds. So in respect for time for everybody, we'll go ahead and get started. So to introduce myself, my name is Cale Harbor. I'm the product manager of Advanced Control Solutions. I would like to thank everybody for joining us today and being part of today's virtual lunch and learn. So as we advertised, uh, we're doing a series of events we refer to as a virtual lunch and learn. If you stay for the entire event, we'll be reaching out to you and sending you a gift card to be able to pick lunch up on us. So please stay all the way to the end and then we'll be reaching out to get everybody's address on where to send those gift cards to. So it looks like we're pretty stable from the waiting room. So we'll keep going. So ACS, I know we have several people that are attending from other parts of the country. We're a automation distributor and Robotique partner located in the Southeast. We cover four states within the area, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, and Mississippi. And we've been very proud to be a part of the collaborative robot movement. And we have been very proud to get to work with Tyler Mays of Robotique. Robotique does an amazing job as a UR Plus certified partner to be able to provide solutions and products and bolt on end of arm tooling to really simplify and be able to make a collaborative robot project get up and running quickly, efficiently, and effectively. And it really adds to the bottom line quite dramatically. So we have with us today, Mr. Tyler Mays. He is our regional representative from Robotique. And we're going to be getting into the in-depth details of your new palletizing solution, aren't we, Tyler? We sure are. Thank you, Kale. And hello, everyone. Welcome to this special Robotique Palletizing Solution presentation, obviously hosted by Advanced Control Solutions and uh, Kale Harbor. So yeah. everyone, please keep in mind that, uh, as Kale mentioned, this is a virtual lunch and learn, meaning we hope you can sit back, relax, and enjoy some lunch uh, while you learn about how automated end-of-line palletizing can help your business overcome the ever-changing demands of today's manufacturing environment. As Kale mentioned, my name is Tyler Mays, and I will be your presenting host for most of today's presentation. Yeah. One thing to point out, I will be monitoring the chat room. So during the course of the event, if anyone has a question, would like additional details or have something they'd like to pose to Tyler or Mark Antoine, who will be helping us with the programming portion of today, please feel free to post that into the chat room and I will be able to moderate and make sure we get all of those pieces of information answered. So with that, I'm going to turn off my camera and let you have the whole thing, Tyler. Perfect. Thank you very much, Kale. All right, so the agenda for today is as follows, and over the next 45 minutes or so, uh, we hope you're going to gain the skills to create your own palletizer simulation. Uh, Robotique's palletizing solution officially launched on October 5th with units shipping this month. Uh, in, all, in all honesty, that launch has greatly exceeded even my own expectations. I'm a mechanical engineer by trade, uh, having spent my years before joining Robotique designing and integrating custom automation focused largely on cobot applications like palletizing. It is important to note that our launch would not have been possible had it not been for Robotique's expert partners like Advanced Control Solutions. ACS joined Robotique as a beta tester for this palletizing solution, providing us valuable insight and feedback leading up to our launch on October 5th. ACS is an industry expert, not just for palletizing, but for all cobot applications. So if for some reason I'm not able to answer your question today or we run out of time, please be sure to get in touch with ACS so they can help you uncover automation projects with help, which help your business. We'll cover a few uh, free, frequently asked questions at the end of today's presentation before holding a Q&A session. 
Uh, and as Kale mentioned, if you do have a question during the presentation, please feel free to post them in the chat. Kale's going to be monitoring that, and then he will uh, interrupt me if we have any uh, that need immediate answer. We also have four polling questions for our audience today. Uh, so if you guys could kindly uh, participate in those polls uh, with your answers, I'd like to thank you for your input. So we have a lot to cover today. Uh, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. For those of you who are not familiar with Robotique, we are an industry leader in the cobot space since our founding back in 2008. A little fun fact for you, our CEO, Sam Bouchard, created Robotique's first product, the Three Finger Gripper, along with two of his college friends. The Three Finger Gripper and company took off when Sam's group kind of hacked into one of the first universal robots and formed what we know today as the universal robot slash UR plus eco space. Uh, since then, we've continued to develop hardware and software solutions for every robot focused mainly on collaborative robots. We are based in Quebec City, Quebec, and are about 150 employees strong across the globe with another office in Lyon, France, and plans for an additional office to host our Asian team. All of our products are made at our headquarters in Quebec, and we have deployed thousands of grippers to, to free human hands, which you can see here is Robotique's company mission. A quick introduction to your Robotique team so that you can put a face to a name. Again, I'm Tyler Mays. I'm your channel sales manager at Robotique, and I'm based out of my home office just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I cover the eastern uh, tree, essentially from Florida to Maine and out to the Mississippi. Uh, we also have Francois or Frank uh, Thibodeau, who is your inside sales specialist. And we will also have the pleasure of being joined later today uh, by one of Robotique's integration coaches, Marc Antoine Gauthier. You can take a screenshot of our uh, contact information if you'd like, but ACS will also be providing this information after today's presentation. So with introductions out of the way, I'd actually like to pause for today's first poll uh, so we can get an inter introduction to today's attendees. Kale, could you go ahead and take the first poll question? All right, so we've got the first poll up right now. Uh, just curious what everybody's role and interest is for today. So obviously it, we just getting a feedback on what level of technical details we want to be able to get to. So that poll is coming in. It looks from the numbers we're we're pretty much even between management and engineers here, maybe a, a few more managers in the area. So all right. Yep, about you know, high 50s for management, 60% for management, 35% are engineers, and the rest are controls people. All right, thank y'all. All right, Kale, I apologize. It seems I've had a uh, technical difficulty on my end. I was not presenting my screen, so I'm just going to go real quick so everyone can see uh, what I just talked about, today's agenda. Don't worry about it, Tyler. We'll deduct it from your pay. <laughs> Wait, we're getting paid? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to mention that. All right. Uh, so we have the results of the first poll in, Kale? Yes, we have uh, the majority of the people, almost 60% are in a management role and 37% are in an engineering role. All right. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. That'll kind of help me tailor my uh, Q&A session later on uh, to better meet your needs. All right, um, so as I mentioned, uh, Robotique has been developing plug and play hardware and software components for collaborative robots since 2008. Uh, in more recent years, we have introduced application kits for common cobot tasks, ult ultimately leading to uh, Robotique's latest launch of the application solutions, including the palletizing uh, solution, which offer turnkey capabilities along with flexibility to handle varying application demands. Here you can see a few of our products, along with some examples of the application kits I just mentioned. Um, you can see we've got bin picking, sanding, machine tending, surface finishing, and more. Um, so if you have questions about these other applications, we're gonna save those uh, for another time. Please go ahead and uh, contact me or ask your ACS representative. So Robotique, along with our partners like Advanced Control Solutions, follows the Lean Robotics methodology to ensure project success. 
Uh, the concept of lean manufacturing may, may be familiar to most of you, and those same guiding principles apply when you're looking to deploy new automation in your facility. Our CEO, Sam Bouchard, took it upon himself to write this book of best practices after deploying thousands of cobots to continue his vision of freeing human hands to perform more value added and fulfilling work that is better suited for automation. If you have a chance to read this book, which I hope you do, uh, you'll find that Lean Robotics is a methodology independent of Robotique or any other brand. Free copies of this book are available and will be hand delivered by your ACS representative. If you prefer another form of media, uh, Lean Robotics is also available on Amazon and Audible. Uh, this is one of many free resources offered by Robotique and we're gonna cover more on that later in this presentation. So if you're able to join ACS and Robotique for last month's Lean Robotics webinar, or you've already had a chance to read the book, these three uh, project phases will be familiar. Lean Robotics breaks up automation projects into three important phases, each with their own milestones for success. You'll see here as we walk through uh, in the design process, we have the manual process definition and uh, I'll just keep clicking through these slides here. I don't have to read every single one of them, but please uh, take a chance to read the Lean Robotics book. And there's also a free uh, Lean Robotics e-learning class available on our e-learning platform. All right, so this brings, up to brings us to today's topic at hand. Uh, how can I automate palletizing at my facility in a cost-effective manner which affords me flexibility uh, should production demands change? This is a common question which I've been asked time and time again over my years of deploying cobots. And so the answer is, it, it's not necessarily simple, but there are a couple of main categories which we can uh, put these, uh, these problems into. Um, the first problem being that in the manual pro manual palletizing process we have kind of three major uh, challenges that we're faced with the ergonomic concerns the time concerns and the human potential concerns along with that we have seen that industrial uh, robotic palletizers have been around quite frankly as long as uh, robots have been around but they do come with their own problems they're not flexible they take up a, a large amount of fate of space in your factory and there's also some serious uh, change over time uh, things that you have to consider um, when you're deploying this th this type of robot. It also typically requires a lot of expertise, uh, requiring an outside third-party integrator, uh, for example, to continue to uh, program and, and support that cell. has launched the industry's most complete palletizing solution for universal robots. We're gonna watch this short video as an introduction before we take a deeper look at the inner workings of Robotique's palletizing solution.
All right, so there's certainly a lot to unpack after that video. Um, and I'm going to cover everything in detail as we go further through this presentation. Uh, but what I want to start with is actually uh, the first of Robotique's free resources, which I'm going to show you today. Um, Robotique, along with our palletizing solution, has launched an online configurator. So if we go here to that online configurator, I'm going to pause briefly to make sure we're still following my screen. And we are. All right, I'm going to start a new project from scratch. And so I, you can see here that I've, I've built and maintained a couple of different palletizing projects. So you'll have the same access um, if you sub multiple cells. But when we start here and use the Robotique palletizing solution template, you'll see that's a, a pretty easy process to walk through. And this is something that I hope everyone has a chance to do today because um, it takes probably less than 15 minutes to go ahead and set up a full simulation. So the first thing we're going to do here is set up our box dimensions and weight. So I'm just going to pick here um, some arbitrary dimensions. I'm going to say my front side is 200 millimeters. My B side is 400 millimeters. My height is fine. My weight, let's go four kilograms, um, just so it's not everything completely standard. Once I've inputted those uh, dimensions, I just go ahead and check that box. You can see the configurator automatically updates to reflect those new dimensions. And then I can move on to the next step. I should also note that you can use either uh, imperial unit units or metric units, depending on which you prefer. I'm going to be programming here in metric just because that's what it defaulted to. Uh, for the pallet, we handle any pallet size that uh, that you may have as long as it's within the reach specifications of the, the UR10, which is the robot used on the Robotique palletizing solution. Um, these dimensions here are pretty standard for a 40 by 48 inch pallet. So I'm just going to go ahead and proceed. But if you do need to customize that, um, you can enter those dimensions here. If you already have a conveyor leading up to the palletizing solution, um, you already have your end of line automation in place, you can input those dimensions. In this case, it's pretty arbitrary. So I'm going to leave it uh, as these dimensions. And then the final step is to set up your pallet. Um, and this is, this is really where a lot of the uh, programming time or, or as much programming time as you need to take is going to be spent editing these patterns. The palletizer is capable of handling a couple different patterns per pallet. So you can run uh, two different pallets on each, uh, a different pallet on each side. You can run different product within the pallet. Um, all of these details, which I encourage you to talk in more detail uh, with your advanced control solutions representative or with Robotique. Um, but just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and edit my A pattern to show you how it works. You can see here when I'm in the editing window, I have the ability to just drag and drop. And you'll see that the cases are going to kind of snap into place. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly create this first pallet. And you can see I, I messed up by going too quick. I can simply hover over it, delete it, and then go back to adding more boxes. After I'm satisfied with my first uh, layer, I can go ahead and check that. And you can see um, here on the screen, I've simulated that entire first layer. I can then edit a second pattern if I'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can see you can also rotate the boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate these and stack myself in a different configuration. All right, perfect. So that looks like two uh, pretty pretty decent uh, pallet layouts. Obviously, if you have uh, drawings of your pallet layouts, you can either input them yourself or again, ask ACS for some help. We can then adjust the number of total layers we have. So I'm just gonna go up to eight arbitrarily. There is no uh, limit to the number of layers, but there is a limit to the maximum pallet height, which is I believe 2.2 meters. We'll, we'll see that again on the spec sheet later in the presentation. Uh, but within these layers, I can quickly switch back and forth. And let's say I want to alternate so that the pallet gets locked in. So layer one is going to be A, two is going to be uh, configuration B, and so on and so forth. Once I go through that, I can just hit check. You'll see the configurator is going to take some time to come up with your simulation. Uh, 
And then what we're left with is a real-time uh, visual uh, 3D simulation of your palletizing routine, palletizing your box dimensions. And you can also see here at the bottom of the screen that you're getting these uh, major KPIs or K key performance indicators. Uh, to tell you what your case rate is, uh, how many minutes it takes to fill up each pallet, uh, some information on how much the full pallet weighs, and you're also seeing your box dimensions you inputted earlier. Um, so again, please, I encourage you to uh, take take a look at this online configurator and go ahead and mess around. There's no harm in in kind of goofing around and, and messing it up. Trust me, <laughs> I've I've messed some of it up myself. So I'm going to jump back. Hey, Tyler. Yes. Hey, a couple things have come in. Um, one question came in about someone who wanted to be able to know how they deal with if they have more than just two products to run, because you showed how you would lay out two different layers. Uh, I thought I would go ahead and answer that one. With When you put in the palletizing node within the programming, which we're going to be getting into here in just a second with Marc Antoine, you can have multiple nodes. So the idea for the two layers is to have your interlocking layers. But if I have 12 different products coming down the line, I can have 12 different nodes and then select between which product I'm going to run and each one could be a different box size. Mm -hmm. So there's really not a limit as to how many different products could be coming down that conveyor. You would just need one node for one palletizing routine for each product as it comes down. Exactly. The, uh, the other question we had was, is everything that we saw in the configurator, is that part of the kit that comes from Robotique, including the, the actuator? Yeah, great question. Um, but that online configurator is kind of independent of the palletizing kit. Uh, so as I mentioned, that is free to access. And we're going to follow up after today's presentation with a link for you to try it out. Um, if you're, you're really itching to get going and you just can't wait until that follow-up email, you can go to Robotique.com and under products, select the palletizer. Um, and if you select, I believe it's start your project today, it'll take you to our configurator. Uh, we're awesome. going to go over later in this presentation exactly what is included in the Robotique palletizing solution box. Um, so I'm going to save the other half of my answer for that. Great. Great. Looks like we're ready for our next poll question. Yep, we are. I've got a question for you guys. Kale, go ahead. All right. So how much assistance do you think that you would need to deploy a Robotique palletizing system? Um, in other words, do you think a, a full outside company would be needed to the, do the entire thing, or do you think you could be able to do it on your own, or maybe with just a little bit of support? So we'll give a couple seconds for those responses to be able to come in. All right, so I'm watching those numbers come in. The majority of people out there feel like they would be able to deploy something like this with just a little bit of ACS support. Uh, there are several people, um, uh, about 70% of the folks, they could feel they could do it with just a little support. 20% of the folks feel like they would need a full integrator to be able to do this. And we have about 10% of the respondees saying that they would be able to do this without any outside support at all. Interesting. That's That lines up pretty well with what I was anticipating. Uh, and to be honest, it's, it's good to hear and a little bit reassuring because Robotique system is designed for everybody, whether you're planning on doing it with a DIY approach, you'd need a little bit of assistance from ACS and Robotique, or you want to go with that third party integration option. Our solution is flexible and ready to work with whatever option best fits your needs. Hey, Tyler, I know this isn't part of our agenda, but why don't we rerun this poll after we do the programming portion of the demo to see if these numbers change any once they see how the programming is set up? Yeah, that's a great idea. All right. So we'll go ahead and look forward to seeing those adjusted results at the end of today's presentation. All right, so finishing out my answer from earlier, talking about what's in the box. Uh, so the Robotique palletizing solution comes with everything you need, uh, except for the universal robot. We use a UR10E or a CB series UR10. Uh, that's something that's gonna be supplied by Advanced Control Solutions. Um, to palletize, uh, we have everything you need to palletize boxes on day one. So the solution is delivered in a crate and comes with assembly instructions along with all the components listed here. And I also must add, ACS decided to go ahead and bypass those instructions when they were doing their beta palletizer testing off sheer intuition. So Kale, if you wouldn't mind, could you talk a little bit about your experience with Robotique's palletizer through that beta testing? 
Yeah, we had a great luck with the system. So when it came in, we were able to unbox it. We were able to get it up and running just within a matter of a couple of hours, that including the mechanical assembly of the product. And we very quickly, without having to get Robotique on the phone or any extra support, able to get it running very quickly, very immediately, and start having boxes run with it. Uh, we actually have our we're, – we're going to do this real impromptu, folks. Hey, Brian, let me borrow you right quick. We actually have our senior robotics engineer with us today who actually did the setup. What they'd like to know is how did you perceive the Robotique palletizing system as far as setup and getting it up and running as your first experience? Um, it's, it's extremely straightforward in that it's a, a wizardized process that you have to follow from uh, initially configuring um, what your palette looks like. It's all graphical, so um, there's not a whole lot of waypoint or logic programming. Um, so as you uh, start with something simple, one box size, one layer, um, you are able to kind of scale that up, add in logic for um, when you need to pick up the uh, package, potentially add in force movements. But um, yeah, like Kale mentioned, it uh, takes only a couple of hours to, to get the robot moving and get some initial basic functionality, which is uh, far simplified to uh, palletizing systems of years past. That was very impromptu. Brian didn't know I was going to drag him into the webinar. Uh, yeah. We did have another question come up in the room. So the question came up, what is the range of rotation for the robotic arm? Assuming we have three different products coming simultaneously or three different configurations, how many standard pallets could they stack on the range of motion of the arm? So I think what they're getting to is the simulator showed us with two pallets, one left, one right. Could we maybe have a third or a fourth stacked up behind that to increase the number of variety that we have coming down? Yeah, good question. And in today's configuration, uh, we are targeting either single or dual pallet um, stacking. We don't utilize, uh, uh, in full transparency, we're not utilizing the full capacity of what the UR10 is capable of. And if you decided to go ahead and come up with a custom solution, our palletizer could certainly be the base for that, but I will say in full transparency that we don't have any immediate plans to account for more than two pallets. Um, but if you do have that type of application where you need additional pallets or pallet infeed and outfeed to be automated, that's where I would strongly encourage you to speak with Advanced Control Solutions because they do have all of those uh, automation components beyond just the Robotique palletizing solution to help solve your application needs. All right. Thank you, Tyler. Perfect. All right, so jumping into this setup uh, for the Robotique palletizing solution, truthfully, the setup is, is just as easy as Bryant mentioned I and mean, follows the same kind of easy to use process as the unboxing experience. So once you have the, uh, the palletizing solution out of the crate, you've mounted the robot to it and you've mounted the end effector to the robot, all you're gonna have to do is move the palletizer to where you need it on your facility floor and set up the programming. Now we're going to jump in here shortly to an actual programming demonstration uh, so you can see what kind of time you're looking at for that program setup. Um, but once that programming is complete, it can be saved and utilized later. And then we hit the operation phase. And again, if we think back to that lean robotics methodology and the three phases of a project, that operation phase is the key is is really the key and the most important one, because that's the only phase in which we are producing parts for the sales co customer. A you know, kind of candid translation of that means that if the robot's not moving and if it's not operating, you're not making money with it. So our goal is to get to that operation phase as quickly as possible. And our goal today is to show you how quickly you can achieve that using the palletizers uh, easy programming. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into a live demonstration of Robotique's uh, palletizing within uh, Universal Robots Polyscope software. So everything you're going to see is going to be a simulation of a, uh, a real teach pendant, uh, which you would get with your Universal Robot. That's where you're doing all of the uh, instruction. I've got a message here from my colleague, Mark, who's going to be doing the programming. Let me just verify that he is good to go. All right, so I am going to change which screen I'm presenting. Pardon me a moment, the advanced person you will ever see a webinar from. All right. 
So what I'm actually doing here um, is joining into a Robotique remote demonstration. Uh, so what's happening is Marc Antoine is live from actually from his house up in Quebec because of the the whole lockdown situation and and social distancing rules. So Mark has been both in and out of uh, the headquarters facility, and he's been able to take a robot home with him to perform a lot of these remote demos. That is something where um, if you want more information about the palletizing solution or truly any uh, cobot application, you can set up a remote demo uh, with ACS and Robotique to go ahead and, and see uh, what exactly your project entails. So what's going to happen here, I'm going to go ahead and talk uh, while Mark is doing some programming in the background. There's kind of eight major milestones um, within the programming that I want to address. So let me pull that up. All right. So when you uh, when you add a palletizer node to Rob using Robotique's UR cat app, this is and this is automatically populated in the UR Teach Pendants programming tree. We're adding that palletizer node, and then the first thing to do uh, within that palletizer node is to set up the box dimensions and weight. So we're going to see here on the screen that Mark is going to go ahead and set those up. So on this screen here, we can see that um, kind of like what we were doing on the, um, the online configurator, it's going to follow the same sort of process. Um, and you're going to go ahead and input your box dimensions, your payload. And once you're all satisfied with that, you can go ahead and save it and move to the next portion of the programming. And then after defining, so the next step after defining those box dimensions is to go ahead and define your palette dimensions screen and show you where there's where those are located within the UR cap. So you can see here again just like that online configurator I'm simply going to input my palette dimensions. You can see that I can have a different palette for the left and the right side um, of my automated cell. Perfect. So now after we've completely defined the palette, uh, we're going to go ahead and set up the configuration and the box layout. So you're going to see here, again, following that same process that I did on the online configurator, Mark can go into the pattern and he can edit both the pattern A and pattern B. We're going to keep this brief uh, since we've already kind of covered this. But if you go into pattern A, you can see that you have all those same adjustments. You can rotate the boxes uh, and configure them to whatever your desired palette configuration is. You can see here that Mark's doing all of his adjustments on screen by pressing the teach pendant. If you'd like, you can also hook up a mouse and keyboard to UR's teach pendant for a little bit easier programming. There's, you know, kind of different strokes for different folks. Everyone's got their own methodology. Uh, but at the end of the day, all of the palletizer programming is performed on the Universal Robots teach pendant, which is kind of unique to the Robotique solution compared to other solutions available on the market. This is going to really simplify your process. It's going to simplify. Um, really the support that's going to be involved. Robotique is able to fully both remote support um, these cells and support them in person through our local uh, distributors like ACS, or if the need arises, we can certainly come on site uh, for some assistance. So you can see Mark's just kind of walking through and, and setting up the rest of his palette configuration to add the rest of the layers. And then once that's set up, really the the Robotique uh, palletizing wizard or the Robotique palletizing co-pilot is really the wizard that's that's making all of this possible and handling all the programming in the background. So typically, if you're going to set this up, you'd have to set up individual locations or at least a palette layout for each of the boxes. Since we've already gone ahead and defined that and um, Robotique's palletizing co-pilot is in the driver's seat, all of that is automatically handled. And then we can worry about kind of our other settings that we may need to adjust. You can see that we can adjust in the robot settings. We can adjust the um, the robot maximum speed and the tool maximum speed. Um, along with that, 
We also have the ability to uh, control where that seventh axis position is. So if you remember, uh, Robotique's palletizing solution employs a, uh, a seventh axis, which is a, a, a ball screw driven uh, actuator with, uh, I want to say a meter and a half a stroke, but now that I'm kind of putting myself on the spot, I'm forgetting. We'll see that in the spec sheet later. Um, but on top of being able to do everything in the palletizing node, uh, you can completely adjust and uh, and change those seventh axis settings to get the robot where you need to. So let's say you need to present a box to a camera to read a label. We can do that or, you know, any litany of other robotic tasks you can handle with a Robotique palletizing solution outside of its normal palletizing routine. So that's important to note. Hey, Tyler. Yes. That was one of the impressive things that we saw when we were testing the beta system is we only had to teach the one point, which was the pickup point at the end of the conveyor. Mm -hmm. And Robotique handled all of the other points on the pallet, all of the motions and the motion of the seventh axis to be able to adjust for the height was all automatic. So that literally meant we taught one point, we went through your setup screens to teach the pallet layout and we were running. There was nothing else beyond that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And and that's exactly the type of experience that, that we designed our product for. Uh, if you're not already familiar with Robotique's products, we put a tremendous amount of effort into the software solutions that we come up with to make them easy to use. Again, with that goal in mind of freeing human hands from automated tasks, we don't want this to be a complicated and confusing process for you. Um, a matter of fact, we're just looking to um, basically ensure that we have a good product fit. And, and because our products are so flexible, both in the hardware and the software side, we are able to take on most applications using standard Robotique product. And that affords you the ability to have a flexible tool uh, using the Cobot as a automation tool rather than a fixed piece of automation that you would see in more traditional um, hard industrial automation cells. So with that, um, I'd like to thank Mark Antoine for doing the programming and bearing with me and, uh, to do this, this uh, remote demonstration of the programming. I'm going to switch back to my presentation screen and look quickly to see that we're on. Perfect. And real quick, I'm just going to jump you through those, uh, those main eight um, milestones in the programming. So again, this is the, uh, this is what you see when you add a palletizer node to your program. This is the box menu that you're going to be editing all of the dimensions, the pallet menu where we set the pallet dimensions, and then we move on to the configuration. Uh, you can see here that we have pattern A, pattern B, and we can edit both of those independently to set up our actual configuration. As I mentioned, you can adjust the uh, tool speed and the tool acceleration capacity. Uh, so if you want for some reason to speed up or slow down your robot beyond what is automatically done by Robotique's palletizing copilot, this is where you would do so. You can also control uh, that seventh axis with a linear axis move node. Um, so this is going to be outside of the palletizing node within the, the UR's programming tree. And I apologize if this is getting confusing because it is a, a little bit of nomenclature. But the gist is um, you can operate the linear axis independently of the automated palletizing routine. You can see here um, that in Robotique's active drive menu, which is a part of our UR cap, uh, you have the ability to jog that seventh axis up and down. And this is particularly useful uh, when you're in the programming and setup phase of your project. So it's a little bit hard to see um, within the program uh, just exactly how uh, Robotique's palletizing Copilot is handling the bulk of that programming workload. That's all happening in the background. But what I really want to emphasize is that uh, Robotique's palletizing Copilot and that automated coordinated motion with that seventh axis, this is where the value is really added. And Robotique's solution kind of excels head and shoulders above the competition. Uh, we're able to achieve faster cycle times, high payloads, uh, and still you know, a, a very flexible offering with, with good size pallet heights all with one single solution. And that at the end of the day is the goal um, when we're employing the lean robotics strategy is to standardize where possible. And so our goal is to create as standard of an end of line collaborative palletizer as we can. Another video here, so you can see a uh, live demonstration of the palletizer in operation.
So as you can see, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight quickly that we're using Robotique's AirPick uh, vacuum gripper. That's one of two Robotique uh, vacuum gripping solutions. We also have the EPIC. The AirPick, it does require an external uh, airline with kind of standard compressed air to be run to it since that gripper uses Venturi vacuum. If for some reason your application, uh, you don't have uh, compressed air available and you need that internal vacuum generator, we can use that gripper. We can also use uh, Robotique's two finger gripping solutions if for some reason you need power, but you need to palletize parts which can only be gripped with a two finger gripper. So diving a little bit more into that path planning, uh, Robotique uh, is automatically uh, generating the robot's trajectory. And so this motion is, is basically as smooth out as possible. So you're achieving the highest, uh, the highest speeds that you're able to achieve. We're also then inherently kind of saving the robot from itself by making sure we're not putting unnecessary wear and tear on the robot's joints on the seventh axis, et cetera. Along with the path planning are some of the more uh, hardware focused features about the Robotique palletizing solution. So it does come with status lights and you'll see here um, that from a distance, uh, you'll be able to see what the, the palletizer status is, uh, whether the pallets, whether it's running, the pallet's full, it's awaiting another pallet, or if we have some sort of error. This is a, a very um, helpful and, and quite honestly in the, the palletizing solutions I've deployed in the past, this is probably one of the top things that customers ask for is a quick, easy, uh, easy to identify way to see what that palletizer is up to. Since obviously it's easy to know uh, how to program the robot, but not necessarily everybody on the production floor is going to be trained uh, to do that, that, that programming. And so this, these status lights keep things as simple as possible. So if we want to talk about some of the best use cases uh, for the Robotique palletizing solution, we're able to hit cycle times where our spec says up to 13 boxes a minute. And truth be told, uh, we have tested some applications which are beyond that 13 boxes per minute um, speed. But it, at the end of the day, we have to come up with a specification that we know we can confidently hold to. Um, so that puts us at 13. With an eight kilogram payload and the optional offset bracket that we include uh, with the palletizing solution, you're able to do nine boxes per minute. So as you increase the uh, payload and you also increase the offset from the tool flange of the robot, that does inherently come with some detriment to the payload capacity of the robot, but we're able to minimize that again with our automated, automated uh, palletizing co-pilot wizard. The box sizes we can handle are uh, five by five by five centimeters or two inches cubed up to uh, a box with, that is the full pallet size. So there's really, in, in all reality, there's not much limit in terms of uh, which cases you're able to handle. The bigger thing here is to uh, make sure that the payload fits within that eight kilogram capacity for the robot. And that's mainly driven by the fact that we're using a Universal Robots UR10, uh, which has a 10 kilogram payload capacity. At this point in time, I do want to note that we don't have a automated label orientation in the palletizing co-pilot, but that is a feature that is about to be released. We're, we're planning on releasing it right around when these units start shipping this month. Um, and so in all reality, by the time, um, if, if you have a palletizing application that does require label orientation, that's something that we are able to handle. The topic of safety is one that is is obviously very, very important. And it's something that we had to consider a lot when we were designing the Robotique palletizing solution. So we're ready for third party safety sensors such as safety interlocks, light curtains and area scanners. This is something that I'd like to continue the conversation offline after this presentation. And we can match you up with the safety solutions that ACS has available. We also encourage uh, customers to do a risk assessment uh, so that you're aware of, of any associated risks with um, not just a, a cobot, uh, but really any automation requires a, a risk assessment. To help make that easier, Robotique has a free e-learning uh, lesson focused around safety that is releasing in the next couple of weeks. Um, and they also, we cover safety in a section in the instruction manual. At the end of the day, it's important to note that uh, the end user, in, at least within the United States, is responsible for, for a safe implementation and risk assessment for any automation that they incorporate. So if you have questions about that, 
don't worry, you're not alone. Safety is, is something that we have to discuss a lot, but again, it's best suited uh, for a conversation with ACS and Robotique when we're talking specifically about your application. A couple examples here, though, of uh, some door and fence setups that, that customers may want to use. Um, again, the palletizing solution doesn't require any hard guarding, uh, but because production floors are busy spaces, we do encourage you to at least consider uh, what the best guarding solution is for you. So you can see here that you can have it uh, guarded on all three sides and then use the light curtain in front, and then you can bypass that light curtain depending on what your lockout tagout procedure is. Um, the same process here without a light curtain or we can do a little bit less hard guarding and we can backfill that with area scanners. So with these area scanners, you're able to, to add a little bit more flexibility to the cobot. Uh, when you're doing a normal cobot task, you can use these safety scanners to actually reduce the cobot to a reduced speed rather than a full-blown production stop. Um, and anybody who, who deals with production knows and understands that stopping production is, is one of the biggest things we're worried about. So it's important to note that we are very flexible um, and, and able to adapt with different safety uh, solutions. Shipping and lead times is another place where it's important to note where Robotique stands, but also note that uh, this, is, this is where Robotique really excels in the marketplace. Uh, so from order to shipment is five business days. All of Robotique's other products have a two-day lead time after we receive an order, which is kind of among the fastest in the industry. Because this palletizer is a little bit more advanced than our, our traditional two-finger grippers, you know, small solutions, it does require some additional lead time. Uh, but once that ships out, uh, at least in the United States, we're looking at four to six business days of transit time. So you could know that from the time of your order to the time this, this arrives on your site, you're looking at about two, three weeks, uh, which in most cases, when you're looking at custom and, and non-standard solutions, um, which are, you know, again, the competitors to the Robotique palletizing solution, you're probably not even going to be able to completely define the scope of work and, and really the whole design of that palletizer within a three-week time span. So in going back to that, uh, that lean robotics methodology, the, the idea of starting production faster, our solution is designed to help you do that. Um, and today I can also confidently say that if we, we start taking on your uh, palletizing application today, we can get that up and running by the end of this year. So that's, that's something important to note. I know a lot of people have budgets that they need to use by the end of this year. And also, you know, production de demands have shifted greatly uh, due to COVID. Hey, Tyler. Yes. <clears throat> One more point with that. The way the tax code is right now in the U.S., and most everyone is aware of it by this point, it's been in place for several years. But right now, capital equipment is still be able to be written off, take the full depreciation 100 percent in the year in which it is received. So basically, with this system, if an order were to be placed here you know, within the next couple of weeks, both the palletizing system and the UR robot would arrive before the end of the year, which means that you would be able to take the full depreciation still in 2020 for tax purposes. So that's a little extra kickback there as far as being able to take that all at one time. And that's one of the advantages we have on the quick turnaround that you've got set up. Yeah, absolutely. And those financing options um, are, are definitely important to note. Um, so along with Robotique's uh, palletizing solution, I want to quickly note some of the support documentation that's available. So obviously we're going to have a product manual uh, that comes along with the, the palletizer. It also has a quick start guide so you can do exactly what ACS did and have your palletizer up and running uh, within a couple of hours. Uh, we also are offering a risk assessment template. The UR caps, um, if you need to update those, uh, the updates are always free and available on our support website. The e-learning, this is something that I've mentioned a couple times already, but I haven't uh, jumped over to show you. So I'm gonna do that quickly. Um, Robotique has a free e-learning platform, uh, which I'm showing you here at just elearning.roboteek.com. In the next couple of weeks, if not days, we're gonna be adding the e-learning for the palletizing solution. Uh, but if we go here to all courses, you can see that we have our course is broken down by category, whether it's an application, a product kit, or some of the webinars we've done in the past. And you can see, again, I'm not going to go through every one of them here, but, uh, you know, 3D BIM picking, surface finishing, CNC machine tending. So many of these common tasks that we're automating with Cobots, 
Uh, we've captured all of that data, all of those best practices and put them in, in a simple lesson plan for you. So if we jump in here, I can just show the lessons are brought down or are, are broken down into segments. And each segment is typically anywhere between five and 10 minutes. So once you create um, your e-learning profile, all of your progress is saved and you can come back to it and visit this at your leisure. Um, we also have, if, if return on investment is something you're concerned about, you can find Robotique's free uh, return on investment calculator. I know ACS also has some ROI tools that they use, or may you, you may also have your own internal ROI uh, calculations that you use either way. Um, I encourage you to have this conversation and we can help you kind of define how this, how deploying a automated uh, palletizer at the end of your lines can help you uh, really better your production and, and ultimately save money. After sales support and uh, application support are handled just like all of our other products, uh, you can always email support at roboteak.com or coach at roboteak.com for assistance. Their typical response time is less than an hour, and, and that's just about 24 hours a day since we're supporting things globally. That about wraps up my presentation. I've got a couple more things to show, but I want to pause for one more poll here. We've got a fourth poll yep. for you in a, in a little bit, and then we're going to go back and revisit uh, that confidence poll that we talked about earlier. Okay. What we're interested in is, do you have a current application that you would like to evaluate the system for? So, all right, those are coming in. Perfect. So in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and, and keep bumping through a couple of slides, Kale. We'll wait for those results to come in, and then we can discuss. Yep. So right. what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reaching out to everyone who attended the webinar today. We will be uh, just checking with you to see who has product they need to test. When can we set up that trial and be able to get that done? If we're just interested in something with a KPI of how many cases per hour can we do or what would the result be, we might be able to do that within the configurator. If it's something where we need to do more physical testing, we would be working with the coaches at Robotique. So we've pretty much settled out on the poll. So about 22% of you say that you do have applications right now. 77% do not. So thank you for that feedback. We're going to be uh, reaching out and following up with you all when this is uh, wraps up. Perfect. All right, so we have here a, a bit of an eye chart, uh, but the specifications, which I believe is going to address one of the questions we got in the chat. Uh, what is the payload capacity for the robot? It's up to eight kilograms. Showing here a couple of the uh, frequently asked questions. Um, I know there's a question on here. I think it's on the next slide uh, about payload capacity, but I'll, I'll just go ahead and cover it right now. There are um, some external devices which are available in the UR Plus market, which theoretically in, increase the robot's payload capacity. Um, we are potentially looking to evaluate those as options, but as we stand today, uh, we can't say confidently that we do work with those third-party um, payload boosting products. If you have an application that requires that, again, please please have that discussion with ACS and Robotique. So jumping through on a couple of the frequently asked questions before we go to our open Q&A session. Uh, the Robotique palletizing solution is compatible with the UR10 E-Series and CB-Series. We are actually not using the force torque sensor that's native to the E-Series robot, and so that enables you to use a CB-Series. And our uh, palletizing copilot is, is, or the, the material handling copilot is not utilizing that force torque sensor. I will say, and I will encourage you to, if, you, if you're not already standardized on the CB-Series or you don't have some you know, very legitimate reason to go with a CB series. I would encourage you to go with that E series because it is the latest and greatest from Universal Robots and affords you a lot of additional flexibility compared to the previous generation. On the question of compatibility with MIR and other AGVs, the answer is yes, our solution is compatible with them. Uh, all you have to do is raise the palletizer up to the desired level, and then we can palletize on top of that MIR um, as, as if it was, you know, flat ground. That's something where I'm hoping to see in the uh, ACS lab down there in Marietta. They've already got uh, AGVs running around and you can see them via webcam at you know any given time. We're hoping to see a, a palletizer stack in boxes on top of those here shortly. Is there an option without a linear axis? Um, not for now, uh, but it's certainly something that we're noting and considering for the future to use Robotique's palletizing copilot without that seventh axis. 
But I will say that for the most part, um, this the Robotique palletizing solution is going to cover 80% or more of palletizing dimension um, requirements as long as they're within the uh, payload capacity for the robot. Is the palletizing solution compatible with other gripper brands? No, unfortunately it is not. And the reason is because we're using Robotique's uh, grip, check, grip check functions uh, to ensure that we don't lose grasp of the part. So whether you're using the standard air pick, the e pick that again doesn't require external air supply, or one of our two finger grippers, each of those has grip check grip check capabilities and it helps us build a a really more sound and 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 foolproof automated solution. As I just mentioned, we are compatible with Robotique's grippers other than the air pick. Can I handle interlayers? The answer is yes. Between um, we don't have any automated way to do that just yet because we need to gather really a lot of customer data for what the more common types of inner layers are. Uh, but we didn't launch our solution without considering that a lot of applications do require an inner layer. Um, so if you recall back to that programming tree, there was a section where you can put a between layer node. And within that in the in the program, that's where you're going to add your your sequence to go ahead and go pick and place your uh, cardboard inner layer. I already talked a little bit about this, um, but the label orientation is not a feature that's a part of the release uh, when the product went live on October 5th, but it is a high priority feature for which we're targeting for the end of November, which goes kind of hand in hand with the ship dates uh, for these first systems. The e-learning, as we just covered, is a work in progress. We can cover uh, two different conveyors by using those two different pallet nodes. Um, and so if you have that type of application where you need to do um, a lot of different product on a pallet or handling multiple conveyors. It's going to add a little bit of complexity, but still stay simple because you just need two uh, separate palletizing nodes. Can you use a custom box sensor? Again, the answer is yes. Um, if it's connected into the UR's uh, digital input slot, we include a box sensor uh, with the palletizing kit. But again, nothing is stopping you from going custom if you so desire. Uh, finally, the system weighs 180 kilograms, including the universal robot. So in theory, you may, you may think that uh, you might not have to bolt it to the floor. Uh, but again, for the risk assessment and for a true proper deployment of the Robotique palletizing solution, uh, we recommend using the provided studs to bolt it to the floor. There are some other options which we can discuss kind of down the load or down the road if uh, bolting into the floor is not an option for you. So with that, it's going to bring us to our fourth polling question. Um, we're going to wrap that one up pretty quickly. And also, if anyone has any questions, please post them in the chat now. How much assistance do you think that you would need to deploy one of these systems? Just looking to see what uh, difference we had now that everyone has gotten to see the programming environment, how easy it is to set up the box dimensions, the pallet layouts, the alternating grids, versus what we had before we got into this. So we'll give it just a couple seconds, but the numbers are, are quite different from what we had, Tyler. So we'll go ahead really? and, uh, yep, we're gonna end that poll now. So we had 46% of the people say they could do it without help. When we did wow. this survey at the beginning of our webinar, only 8% of the people said that they would be able to do it. That's up significantly. So hats off to you and Marc Antoine for showing us the details there. The number needing ACS help went from 65% earlier to 46% now. So that's a, a lot of the shift of the people being able to do it on their own. And then the number of people that feel like they would need a full integrator went down from 20% to 7%. Wow. So I think this speaks very highly to the ability of the software to make this a simple application to get up and running. That's that's great to hear, and I must say, if you're able to follow along with my instructions, then I can assure you <laughs> that you'll be you'll be very well off either either taking the DIY approach or using some help from uh, Advanced Control Solutions. There's right. obviously a lot to talk about and and a lot of details which we kind of glossed over here. But again, um, for those of you that uh, already have a palletizing application or those of you who have one in mind and are looking to learn more about it, please uh, have that conversation uh, with ACS. Yeah. And I just put up the last poll of the day. So most people here are aware of the dedication that ACS has to our training program. Over a normal year, we will have 35 to 45 training classes that we host 
to be able to teach collaborative robots. We teach programming classes, camera classes, and so forth. And this year with the social distancing, with the lockdowns that we've had, that has drastically changed things, but it has accelerated and improved our webinar presence. But in looking for 2021, as I'm looking to the schedule and I'm looking to set things, obviously I'm looking at feedback for, are we ready to start attending face-to-face -face classes? So uh, the poll we got here is, is perfectly even. 50% of you say, yes, you would be able to attend a training workshop in 2021. 50% say no, that uh, you still have some reservations there. So we will probably begin slowly integrating our in-person workshops and classes during uh, the beginning of 2021. Of course, we would take into account distancing, limit the number of classes, the appropriate sanitation, and of course, we'll be paying very close attention to the numbers and the recommendations from uh, uh, the scientists and other things as far as the safety aspect of it. So we're not going to do anything that we don't believe is going to be safe for everybody involved, but wanted to start getting that feedback. So that's all the questions. There was nothing else left in the chat room, Tyler. Perfect. Um, I wanted to, I want to thank you and Mark Antoine for being with us today and being able to host this. Uh, it's an incredible product that I think is going to be able to help with people's bottom lines, be able to help with labor shortages, be able to become more efficient and be able to get up and running very quickly. And I want to thank you for taking the time to be with us today and show us everything. Yeah, absolutely. Kale, thank you very much. Thank you to the entire ACS team. Again, not just for hosting today's webinar, but for also partnering with Robotique to beta test and, and help us develop the great solution what we were able to launch. I also want to thank all of today's webinar attendees. I know it's a little tough with the uh, current circumstance. Uh, I can't see all of your faces, shake hands and, and introduce myself to you, but I do look forward to brighter days uh, where we're able to, to get those things done. Again, please continue these conversations with Robotique. Uh, always go to Robotique's website for more information. And also, uh, please, if you don't already know, uh, find out who your ACS representative is so they can help you, again, start palletizing faster and start your project with advanced control solutions. Yep. And the important aspect for those of you who stayed for the whole thing, uh, we're going to be reaching out to you and getting your address to send that gift card to be able to pick up lunch on us. And also to follow up with those of you who have an active project that we can start helping you with today. Thank you all for attending and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.